Hi everyone, I'm Hamsa. I'm um, sorry. I why did this? Yeah. So I was a graphic designer, and I used to run a studio called Obsessive Compulsive Designers that did a lot of graphic design studio work. We worked on a lot of grid-based stuff, but for print. And uh, my work was always like very like colorful and fun, and like you know, I always liked to kind of. Um, use a lot of like visual expression when I'm doing work. So uh, my journey from a graphic designer to a web designer, front end developer happened uh, around 2013 when I started taking websites on from my clients. And very soon after that, by 2013 end, I realized that I needed to count on developers every step of the way. And that was a bit frustrating for me. So in 2015, I kind of like, uh, took all my savings and went to Canada for a boot camp, for a coding boot camp, which kind of taught me how to code. And so in nine weeks, I kind of, they made us work like some 16 hours a day, like drill CSS, HTML to us, as well as JavaScript. And, and I was a better person <laughs> after that. But the reason why uh, it was very impactful for my design process is that I wanted to be able to understand how development works to guide my design process a lot better. So uh, this is a place I studied. It's called Juno now. It used to be called HackerU before. And uh, I've learned some of the best lessons from accessibility practices to code workflows to just keeping things semantic from the school. So, um, and then I came back from the boot camp and I came back to India. And ever since then, I've been working on a lot of content websites. And uh, I've been kind of like understanding how my graphic design avatar kind of transforms to the web with every project. And um, so like grids is a subject that's very dear to me because I used to be a graphic designer and that kind of is the framework of everything we do. But back in 2015, there were mostly advertising agencies doing websites, but at that point, there were no bespoke like web design studios. So what I realized was there needs to be a voice of design also in web design. So uh, it was very interesting for me to apply whatever I've learned in graphic design on the web. So one thing I always believe is that whatever content you put on a website, it can't be boilerplate and it can't, it's not going to be a one size fits all. The same canvas can kind of hold very different things based on how much hierarchy you want to give it and uh, or how much uniformity you want to give it, you know? So I think the way that you see space kind of transforms when, when, once you see it in a grid. So today our journey is going to be, we're going to be talking about why custom grids and not something like bootstrap or something that's already tailor-made and available. We're also going to see how to, uh, how to think responsibly, uh, responsibly at the design stage itself. What are some of those scalable elements in terms of content that we need to be aware of? We're also going to see step-by-step, -step, how do we define a responsive custom grid? And I, I have like, uh, I don't know how much of, um, like I have gone a little bit geeky over here, I must admit, but maybe once we go, I would be happy to introduce it, like entertain any questions. Then we're going to look at very quickly these two topics, which is after you do all of this, um, the grid system that you make, how do you hand this grid specification off to developers as well as how do you, what are some of those small CSS things that I feel designers should kind of be aware of and think in relation with the grid itself. So uh, that's going to be our journey today. Let's start with why custom grids. Uh, the 12 column grid that most C uh, frameworks, is, frameworks provide, I don't have an issue with that at all because I think 12 columns is good, but it's a scaling of the 12 column framework like bootstrap is where the problem arises. And again, like I don't think a one size fits all approach can be taken. Uh, for a website like this. So when you have like a 12 column approach, the fact that this turns to this on this on a smaller uh, laptop and this turns into this on tablet, et cetera, is something that is very limiting. And the problem with these frameworks is from a code point of view that the more you try to fight with them, the less futile, the more futile it becomes. So it's better to kind of create a grid from scratch. And, and some of the other, uh, 
so what constitutes a content website we are not talking about all kinds of website we are talking about website that pack a lot of content that that it needs to be a resilient template to which if you throw any kind of content it should kind of sit and stick well so we are talking about blogs news uh, brochure sites and e-commerce sites and all of these things need uh, need to be built with kind of like that resilience that once you it can take whatever content you give it once once you've handed it over to the client that's going to be using it so um, how to think responsibly at the design stage there are some key, uh, key variables that um, determine how a grid scales in in my experience so, so uh, some of those key variables are typography the photography which is the photography and media that uh, constitutes uh, what that's part of the website as well as the device hierarchy so um, in uh, typography we have uh, this is for example six different typefaces in the same font size and um, this goes back to that wardrobe drawing that i showed you that each one has a different composition for example this is way more dense this is slightly more loose so the way that some of these uh, typefaces will dictate the gutters and the spaces and the margins are going to be very different just on the basis of the way that those characters are formed so the font attributes like weight size and construction can vastly dictate the way the grid is defined we are also on in content website in dynamic content websites where we're creating a template for someone to upload future content it would be great to like kind of design with high definition photography but in reality what we are really working with is like you know these screen grabs that like um, this is from the hindustan website uh, news times website this is from catch news uh, so these are some things that you can't control because the way that the editorial process works might not be in our control but it would always help to know what our variables are when we are designing stuff so we need to just make sure that we are not designing for something like this we should need to just make sure that we know the kind of content we're going to be dealing with this is a, a screenshot of three of the uh, three different websites um, that i've designed and uh, website a has an equal distribution of desktop and mobile whereas best, uh, website b has a greater majority of desktop users versus mobile and website c has a very large percentage of mobile users and less desktop this also is a big factor in kind of dictating how your grid should scale and how much how many enhancements you should prioritize for which devices so i think like to look if especially if it's a web redesign project to kind of go back to analytics and look at what is that composition that's um, there for mobile and desktop so that we can prioritize things accordingly might be interesting as well um, might be one of the factors to do as well if uh, so there is a request from the audience if you can just slow the pace a little bit because it's okay. getting a little too fast to uh, uh, to understand some of the points okay. so yeah. if you can spend a little more time and the, the the initial presentation goes a few minutes more that should be okay 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 Thanks. okay that sounds good to know yeah that's good to know uh, is there any part that i should kind of revisit right now Uh, i i assume you can continue and and people can ask questions if they want to okay uh, but yeah i think this is the right time to say it because the next part is going to be a little bit uh, it it's better of paced a little bit slower so yeah so just to kind of recap this point that there are three variables in defining and scaling a grid that what is typography we need to understand that if you're using a certain typeface it will influence our grid the second thing is images we are not working with these really picture perfect images in content websites we are working with images that are more dynamic that we might not have more control of uh, control of we are working with vertical images landscape images different proportions of images as well and the third thing is that the fact that Uh, when we are doing a website redesign project it's always good to kind of go back and see the analytical data of that website to see what where are the users kind of accessing this website from are they accessing it from mobile more or desktop more and some of these um, some of these things can really guide the grid so that we can see how much more effort we need to kind of put into a mobile device screen versus how much more effort should be put into a desktop device screen Yes. Yeah, the recap is great. 
Okay, cool. Yes. So, um, so defining a responsive custom grid. Now, um, there are like a couple of like uh, steps that uh, that I follow, and I've tried to kind of nutshell it so that it's kind of easy to follow. So let's let's go through with it. Uh, let's go go through them. So the first thing is our starting point is that when we want to have a content website, we want it to scale at at least four devices, right? So we need it to scale on mobile, on tablet, on desktop, and on like a 27 inch iMac or something like that, a large desktop. So let's assume at this point, because this point, the, this design, um, uh, this presentation is not about how to design websites. So let's assume that we have an idea that there is a website design that we have ready more or less for desktop and mobile, right? And we have not used any grids to kind of create it. I've just used the example of Slack, but I've just kind of have a one page ready on desktop and mobile because this is mostly something that designers is where they have like these two designs and they can kind of say that, okay, this is how the design looks on mobile. This is how the design looks on desktop. So, um, and this is like another example where we, we are, we are mocking up some pages on the desktop and mobile. Now, um, one thing that you would do next, once you kind of start having these uh, pages ready, the one thing that is common on a lot of content websites is listing pages. Now, what a listing page is, is that it's a listing of search items, a listing of blog articles, or a listing of products. So that, that it, this page mostly consists of a grid. If, if you kind of follow many of the UX patterns that are there, it would be a page that kind of con consists of a grid. So ideally when you're starting off to design a grid for a website like this you would actually first go and visualize their listing page and say how many columns would each of these things kind of have and in some cases they might not have any columns at all but if they have any columns like if i'm putting three of these items in a row then it becomes like a three column grid if i'm putting four items it becomes a four column grid there's another case where I'm putting five columns and it becomes a five column grid. So here the first, uh, the first step is always to kind of just visualize your listing page. When in doubt, I would say use 12 columns. Um, the reason why uh, 12 columns can be used is because 12 columns can be easily divided by two, three, four, and six. So uh, for example, a 12 column grid could have taken care of listing page A as well as listing page B because, because uh, like uh, four and three are uh, divisible, 12 is divisible by both four and three. What it can't take care of is uh, listing page C, which is, which is again, like it could, it could leave like two columns on the side and use the 10 columns in middle to kind of dictate those five columns, but uh, to, to dictate the rest of the space. But mostly this 12 column kind of takes care of most of these permutations and combinations when you're just starting off with grid. Well, unless you need something like to be designed super custom, I would say like in that case, and you want more flexibility on desktop, in that case, you can prioritize something like a 20 column grid or a 16 column grid, etc. But when you're not sure, you can definitely go for a 12 column grid. So the first, the fourth step is to set the number of columns on desktop and mobile. So we've already decided that, all right, like uh, let's go with a 12 column grid on mobile because I have these two particular listing pages on, on my desktop. So let's go with 12 columns on my desktop. And the mobile, what I usually find useful to do is to divide the desktop grid by two. And to kind of, if I have uh, 12 columns on desktop, my mobile columns end up being six columns. And that's kind of a starting point. If I have to tweak it later, I would, but most likely I never have to. So um, it's mostly like, uh, so that's first you just define how many columns you're gonna have on desktop and mobile. Now for a desktop canvas, so there are, the first thing we've done is decided how many columns are needed. Next, we define the canvas size. So what is the size in which these 12 columns are going to span? And for the purpose of this, it's always useful to use an easy multiple of 12 
to kind of get this number so it would it could be like a 1200 or 1260 or something like that which is an easy multiple of the number 12 so that it becomes easier to calculate the responsive grid later down the line so um, likewise when you're doing uh, a mobile canvas the mobile canvas that i like to use is uh, 360 pixels because again it's a multiple of the six columns that we have as well as it's a super common mobile width yeah so uh, that's uh, so right now we've we've set the number of columns in our grid and we have defined the canvas size of our grid of of two of the devices of our grid now let's look at margins columns and gutters there are there are three components of the grid which is margins columns and gutters so let's look at what margins are the things that go on the extreme end of our 12 column grid on desktop or on uh, the extreme end of the six column grid on mobile are the margins so in any grid in the grid that i'm showing you today there are two margins on either side of the grid the next thing is columns so in a 12 column grid there are 12 columns and in a six column grid on mobile there are six columns of uh, the grid so um, we have 12 and 6 of the columns gutters since we are having margins on the side and then we have 12 columns we'll have 11 gutters on desktop and five gutters on mobile yeah so th that's kind of the composition of the grid that we have so we have margins columns and gutters so let's solve for the gutters and the margins. So when we are defining, what we need to do next is define what are the sizes of each of these elements? What's the size of the margin of the gutter and of the column? The answer to that is if we solve for the margins and the gutters, the columns will figure themselves out. So each of these to solve for the gutters and margins, you need to first set the gutters for desktop and mobile. So uh, we have um, we have 11 gutters on desktop and five gutters on mobile. So again, remember the time when I said that, you know, the, the different typefaces lead to different uh, ways that the grid changes. So good way to set the gutter, a good tip to set the gutter is to take a desktop, your 12 column desktop and put two text paragraphs next to each other and size them comfortably so size them in a way that you know that you know there is enough space for that type typeface to breathe a lot more so to go back to this example uh, a, a typeface like this might need just say 20 pixels of a gutter whereas a typeface like this might need 30 to 35 pixels of a gutter because of the fact that its line height is larger the fact that the typeface itself is is lighter it has a lesser weight and it is less denser than this collectively. So, um, so the gutter for desktop is very, very heavily determined by the typeface that you use. So put the two typefaces aside and, and kind of like uh, visually put them apart in a way that you feel comfortable. And um, on, on mobile, to do the same activity on mobile, instead of putting two texts side by side, because on mobile, a two column text layout whether two paragraphs running side by side is not very common so a good way to determine the gutter size for mobile is by putting two images side by side and to see what's a comfortable kind of spacing between these two images and ideally these images should be chosen from the images that you have found for the project whether it's those news grab images or anything like that don't use cat images like i did use actual images from your project so that would give you a good idea of how much they need to be spaced because in a news website if there's too much subject subject matter in a you know in a particular uh, image you might want to space them a little bit more so the gutters then would be larger so here with this principle, we can say, for the sake of this example, we can say that, all right, with the way that, with this paragraph spacing, we've set the desktop gutter to 30 pixels and the mobile gutter to 16 pixels. Yeah, so we've kind of got our gutters in place. Now we need to solve for margins. So we know that what we had seen before, we know that we need to set the margins for desktop and mobile. So, um, we kind of go into so here the margins are way more important for mobile than for desktop 
because without a margin any text that is sitting on the screen would kind of stick to the edge of the device so uh, so th and that's why we need kind of like a margin to kind of get all of the text within the frame of the uh, within the frame of the device with comfortable space on the left and right so the project typeface again on your um, on your project typeface will help determine this margin also for you on mobile so uh, like you need to just keep it at a comfortable distance from the edge of the device so that it kind of sits well on your device yeah so on desktop though because there is so much more space you can actually like consider that your same unless there is a specific use case that you want a lot of space on the left and right of your grid you can actually say that let's keep the same gutter space as um let's keep the same margin as the gutter so if we have it's kind of kept 30 pixels as the uh, if we've kept 30 pixels as a gutter we can keep 30 pixels as a margin so now we've calculated the gutter and the margin for both of these things so i I've, I've decided that in on my mobile device uh, i need to keep the text 20 pixels from each of the edges so that it kind of sits well and doesn't look like it's kind of running to the edges so my margin and gutter are different on mobile and this on mobile whereas the margin and gutter are same on desktop because i'm like all right i can use the gutter in the desktop as well now the calculation for column width so a column width is not done visually and unlike margins and gutters which we are calculating visually the calculation for column width does not happen visually so um let's look at our variables here so we have our column width and we have our desktop and mobile and we've got our variables which is the margin gutter for desktop and the margin gutter for mobile so what we will do and this slide i will stay on for a bit but uh, what we will do is we will first subtract the 11 gutters so we have a, a 1200 pixel canvas um, and then we will subtract the 11 gutters from it so each gutter is 30 pixels over here so we'll subtract 330 pixels which is 11 into 30 which is the total gutter value from that canvas then we will subtract the two margin values from the left and right of the canvas so we will subtract 60 from it as well so when you subtract 1200 uh, minus uh, the 30 uh, 330 for the total gutter minus the 60 for the total margin you're left with 810 pixels which now we know that within these 810 pixels are uh, that's our total column width for 12 columns so when you divide that by 12 you get 67.5 which is our column width on desktop yeah so um and don't worry about the pixel value here because it's going to be insignificant once we go forward the reason we're getting pixel val values are so that we can eventually define a fluid grid yeah so um so Vic, any questions here because i want to make sure that uh, this part is understood before i go forward uh I do not have much questions at this stage. Uh, okay. I mean, I do have uh, a some thing, some few of them that I have collected, but they they, they will distract from the thing that you are you are talking to, okay. talking about. So it's cool for me. I have understood most of the things that you are laying out uh, in the audience. In case you have any specific question, you can probably quickly raise your hand or something. Uh, uh, I don't see anyone raising their hand right now. So okay. so let's let's I, I would say let's continue and let's do the questions at the end. Okay. So, and then we have the, so we have the column width for desktop. Similarly, we kind of have our um, margins and gutter for mobile. Our canvas width is 360. We have said our margin is 20 and our gutter is 16. We have two margins. So uh, we are going to subtract 40 from the total, which is a total margin value. We have five gutters. So we're going to subtract 80 from, which is a total gutter value from the canvas value itself. So at the end of it, you get 240 pixels, which is a total column value for six columns. And the column width is going to be about 40 pixels because you divide 240 by six, you get 40 pixels, which is your individual column value. Yeah. So similarly, so now what that means is we've kind of got our canvas width, our margin, our gutter and our column width for desktop as well as mobile and but these are very pixel centric and these are not going to help us define a scalable grid like we want to so the next step is to kind of convert these into 
percentages. So if you actually convert all of, if you set the canvas width based on these measurements, which is the 1200 pixel, based on this, if you set the canvas width to 100%, uh, the margins then become 2.5%, 2.5%, and the column width becomes 5.625%. So these correspond to the pixel calculations that we've done here. Likewise, the mobile canvas width, if we keep it as 100%, the margin gotten column from 20, 16, and 40 pixel become 5.5%, 5, 5, 4.5%, 5 and 11%. So this kind of becomes then our scalable grid that we have for like for us to now start using within these two breakpoints, right? So, so now we have like a fluid grid that's happening on mobile, and then we have a fluid grid that's happening on desktop. Now we need to solve for these other two devices that we spoke about initially, which is the tablet as well as the large desktop. Now I always uh, love consulting the large desktop when I'm creating a grid because it gives a lot of answers about, um, I have a lot of feelings about the large desktop and I will talk about them. So let's go to the large desktop. Hamza, can you, can you also define the large desktop sizes yeah. that you're thinking of? Yeah. So, um, Okay, so the 27 inch monitor is what I'm um, visualizing when we are seeing the large desktop thing. So it's it's a monitor that's maybe even bigger than like a 21 inch monitor. So it's like a huge 27 inch monitor. And this is mostly, uh, mostly for your, uh, because I'm sure like because of our 4K screens, even, even like our um, laptops that we use can actually produce really, really like, uh, it can, it kind of has the same out, output as you would see in a 27 inch monitor but uh, the the reason for visualizing it is because you're usually designing on your laptop but what happens when this thing scales way higher to like a bigger computer right and and so right now there are three ways so when i'm speaking about larger uh, larger desktop i'm thinking about a 27 inch monitor where this is like a 13 inch monitor yeah so we've solved for the 13 inch we've solved for maybe a handheld phone we've not solved for tablet and large desktop yet so let's look at the large desktop so on a 27 inch monitor your your screen that you you've built which is the 12 column grid can scale three ways so it can scale in a way that you create the same thing and it scales exactly with the same fluid proportions that we have where your margins will be 2.5 percent on the side and it will kind of just map one is to one from your 15 inch to your 27 inch the second way to do it is having a wrapper for the content but allowing some background elements to scale so to kind of say that, all right, we this part, what we are seeing over here, what we've designed and, and made our grid for, kind of corresponds to the center of the screen over here. But what I, what I want to do is kind of allow some of the background elements to flow on the sides of the screen, because in, in that case, it kind of looks seamless. It, even though we're not kind of like doing something specifically for that screen, it kind of gives a seamless experience. The third way to do it is when you take it and you kind of scale it exactly like that, but you take no time to kind of make, uh, put like, uh, put your backgrounds further or take any kind of like effort to uh, scale the grid any further than what you have designed. So these are the three ways to scale it. Now, so the three ways to scale it is the same design can can look like this on a 27 inch monitor. It can look like this where it's seamless. It has seamless backgrounds and it can look like this where there's a wrapper for everything. And there are some references that I've, I've put in for each one of these uh, types of grid systems. Now, let's just talk about why would you use something like this, right? So uh, ideally, when you this is where you kind of go back to those analytical data, the analytical data that we saw, where we see like the device distribution between the different websites. So in a website where um, if you see, for example, Smashing Magazine, which is also targeted very heavily to designers, they are kind of, they use an approach like case A, where the content kind of 
is is designed to fit in a 27 inch monitor so apart from doing their 12 column grid they actually take the effort to create something unique as an experience for some for a monitor that's larger whereas um there would be some website like maybe y combinator or something that kind of just cuts everything to the center like that and does nothing else but many websites do the center so the way that i usually go about making a choice of how my design should scale is time if i have zero time to cater to this device based on the project priorities and because based on anything that's the only case where i would go into case c where there is i like it's an inconsequential breakpoint for me 27 inch so i am not going to take care of it at all i'm just going to scale it as is and put like a background over there and that's the only case where i would do kc and it's fair to do that i won't say that it's wrong to do that but if your users are not there you don't want to spend too much time although case b is a place where i feel it has um it's a right amount of hygiene to do for a project where you are not taking extra effort like not creating a unique experience but you are you're just kind of scaling all the elements to make it look like hackily like it fits on a 27 inch monitor and case a is when it scales proportionately and here one one thing to be not misunderstood is that it is not just because we are doing we are mapping a 15 inch design to a 27 inch design like this it does not mean it's easy out of the three uh, cases that are being mentioned here this would probably take the the most effort because you kind of solving solving for viewing distance we are solving for the typography to be seen from a different distance your uh, also some of these elements can't scale just as is so you'll have to kind of create a slightly unique thing and you can't just do like all right scale it 160% and it works so it would require a lot of effort and i would only put in this kind of effort if my audience is on a 27 inch uh, mac or if i am left with so much time on the project that i can kind of afford to kind of indulge myself and go into like case a so but i would mostly stick to case b for most of like my uh, scaling needs <coughs> sorry so the next thing is like we we visualized it on larger desktops and now let's visualize it on an ipad so there are um, yeah sorry ignore that footnote so the devices so what we are saying is so as you saw before the large desktop largely borrows from the grid that we've already defined for the desktop it's not a special grid we are defining unless uh, like if even unless it's kind of case a for these cases we are mostly like defining this exact same grid that we have and we're working with that so um what about the tablet would it take the mobile grid or would it take the desktop grid so here is where defining breakpoints comes into the picture where um the tablet is actually two screens right you have the same content that is on tablet portrait and the same content on tablet landscape so then how do you scale your desktop and mobile versions for these two devices what i've seen often work is that the desktop one lends itself well to the tablet landscape and the mobile one lends itself well to the tablet portrait so in such a case what you would do is set these very arbitrary ranges for the breakpoints that you want which is say for example on mobile anything below 500 uses this design in tablet portrait what uh, i would do is just kind of stop it at a place between the tablet portrait and tablet landscape so that it kind of is a good range to take care of many devices that fall in that uh, range so i would kind of define a breakpoint between say 500 and 900 which stops just shy of the tablet landscape uh, thing which is around 1100 pixels uh, which is about 1100 pixels width and i would kind of say that all right my my design is going to take the mobile grid here although even in this case if you notice that on mobile my margins were 16 pixels or sorry 20 pixels on either side right the what what is a good kind of hack if you don't want to 
if your audience is maybe only like only 0.5% of your audience is on tablet portrait right you and you you also want to prioritize both the other experiences way more one good thing to do for this mode is usually to have a um a additional margin on the left and right because the mobile margin doesn't very well lend itself to this uh, to the screen and it's also is applies for like mobile landscape mode like this breakpoint takes care of tablet portrait and mobile landscape so it's always better to kind of have um larger margins on the left and right in this breakpoint if you're not doing anything else but the other customizations you can do is say for example if elements are only uh, are taking two columns here they can take three columns here you know so it's there are few uh, component level customizations that can be done here but i wouldn't bother too much about it if your audience is not here but i would still like increase the padding for this big point and let it use the exact fluid grid that the mobile uh, the mobile one has likewise the desktop one we've seen it lend itself to the large desktop it will also lend itself to the tablet landscape and one and usually when you think about this in in practice it feels like this is going to be super cramped and tight right because uh, something that you do in 1200 is going to look really really cramped in this in this breakpoint but one uh, thing that and this is probably a talk for another time but uh, you use uh, like every project if you're kind of like defining just like you define typefaces so like the grid for mobile and desktop separately it's also very good to define the typographic scale differently for mobile and desktop so um so that means that when you're when you're kind of using a heading on mobile it is like 12 or sorry 20 pixels and when you're using that same heading on desktop it's 60 pixels but what what this uh, particular breakpoint does is that it uses a desktop grid it's very very cramped but if you feel like the content is super like tight one option is to kind of use the mobile type scale in this breakpoint as well so that uh, it kind of lends itself well and it it uh, it sits really proportionately to this grid so both of these would look similar but this would use like the mobile typeface in the same grid same measurements as the desktop fluid grid but you kind of allow your mobile type to hit until 1200 before you change to desktop so that's the that's kind of the strategy that i have noticed is very um, easily kind of scalable for uh, these different breakpoints um so here now when we communicate so once so by now we've got our margins columns gutters we've understood what these percentage widths are of these things because we've calculated it from a pixel value that works we've defined how the, these different devices need to scale and which grids these need to use from these two um, from these two breakpoints so now we go into how do suppose i am working in a silo and i'm i'm doing all this out of like my living room and my developer sitting in noida and um, how do i communicate the grid and breakpoints to them at uh, this stage hamsa i would also just do a quick time check because it's 11:47 so from here onwards if you can just uh, uh, pace yourself accordingly yeah. so that we can probably uh-huh. wind up and Yeah, sure. I have only like two slides more, so I think it's oh, should... perfect. Yeah, perfect. That's so, awesome. uh, and uh, the communication of the grid breakpoints is similar. I just uh, like if I was working with someone who is um, not like in not sitting right next to me, I would just kind of create a table saying, okay, this grid is this breakpoint applies to from this pixel range to this pixel range. uh i would uh, i would say that it has these many columns the column width percentage the gutter width percentage what is the padding left and right you can uh, you this is a margin that i spoke about this is a screenshot from an older project that's why it has different values as well as like the breakpoint in which this uh, grid kind of kicks in so it looks something like this the handoff looks something like this where different breakpoints are defined and it also just to show you the 27 inch thing this is kind of using case b where the elements it's scaling exactly as the 
a smaller desktop grid, but it's allowing elements to flow further. So just to, uh, it's always good to give like a visual cue of how these need to scale in larger monitors. And stress testing components, I think this is something that I would leave um, everyone to explore uh, by themselves. But there are a couple of things that I feel are so hand in hand with grid, which is there are a few CSS properties that you should consider. And uh, one is max width, where when an element is placed, say, in two columns and it's sitting very comfortably in two columns, when it scales to our larger desktop view, uh, sometimes it might look larger than what you what you want it to look. In such a case, setting uh, se setting the fact that this should take these two columns, like my paragraph should sit in these two columns, but the paragraph should not exceed, say, 640 pixels. It's always good to set a max width in, six, uh, in pixels because that kind of helps bring balance, it helps you make sure that paragraphs don't run for 15 words a line and things like that. Another thing is object fit, and I would encourage everyone to kind of who work with content websites to learn about this property of CSS, which kind of tells you how images should scale within a container, and it can be leveraged a lot in content websites. So that's kind of about it. So this is what we covered today. Why custom grids, how to think responsibly at the design stage, how to define a responsive grid, stress testing your components for scale and handing off grid specifications to designers, to developers, yeah.